Essentials uh, here uh, for the Faith Builders Fellowship, and we're recording these uh, uh, messages, if you will, these teachings <clears throat> for you, our fellowship ministers and our fellowship leaders, and they will be uh, on the site and on the channel, and uh, you will have access to them. And uh, we are going to, I believe, get into some really good things over the course of, uh, I started to say a series, but this is something that's just ongoing. This is something that the Lord has dealt with me that I need to do uh, to keep the flow um, in our ministers and in those fellowship ministers that are connected to us. And uh, we're just excited about the opportunity to do it. And so God's so good to us. So I want to start off um, talking about our heritage, our heritage as ministers. You know, somebody said something to me one time concerning relationship. Uh, it was actually my wife. And she said, you know, we would not have First and Second Timothy in the Bible if there wasn't a relationship between Paul and Timothy. If there wasn't a relationship where Paul was pouring into Timothy and Timothy was receiving from Paul, there would have been no reason uh, for him to have written uh, First and Second Timothy. And so uh, our heritage is very important as it pertains to fulfilling the plan of God in our lives. And so we want to go today to 2 Timothy chapter 1. The dictionary defines heritage as that which may be or is inherited. That which may be or is inherited. So right there we get the understanding that a heritage is something that is inherited or that may be inherited. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, uh, the or 2 Timothy chapter 1, excuse me, the Apostle Paul is writing to Timothy here, and he makes this some statements here that we need to see. I believe that far too many individuals are in the ministry today and are not aware or think lightly of their spiritual heritage. Now, I'm certainly not speaking uh, about those of you watching this uh, because I believe that you value what God has brought into your life, but it's important to think on it, and it's important to understand uh, the significance of it. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, beginning in verse 1, it says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. Notice, to Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remembrance of you in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see you, being mindful of your tears, that I might be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in you also. The uh, New American Standard Version of verse 5 says, For I am mindful of the sincere faith within you, which first dwelt in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I'm sure that it is in you as well. So notice what we see from these verses is that Timothy had a heritage of faith. Timothy had a heritage of walking in the Word of God. And Paul said it dwelt first in your grandmother, and then it also dwelt in your mother Eunice, and he said, I'm persuaded that it is in you as well. This heritage had been passed down from generation to generation, all right? And 
your heritage is important for a couple of different reasons. First of all, it tells you where you came from. All right? Uh, There's nothing worse than not knowing where you came from. I've dealt much in the uh, prison systems and the jail systems uh, of America, and I find over and over and over and over again that a large part of the problem is a lot of these men don't know where they came from. And when I say that, they know who mom is, but they don't know who their dad was. They, they, see, that's the heritage. That's, that's the heritage. If I don't know uh, where I came from, then there's, there's going to be gaps because I won't know, uh, for, la- for just a real simple explanation, I won't know why I do certain things, why I act certain ways, uh, wh- why do I do this, why do I think this. It's something that's in heritage, but I don't know where I came from. Secondly, it tells you where you're headed. This is where I'm going, all right? It tells me where I came from, and it tells me where <clears throat> I'm going. If you want to know why someone acts the way they do, look at where they got their heritage from. Look at what where they sprang from, if you will. Amen. And the thing that we, that we see here concerning Timothy is you see Paul encouraging Timothy, but you never see Timothy quitting. You never see Timothy giving up. All right. There were other people in the Bible that Paul wrote about in the Pauline epistles. Um, The the obviously the most famous one would be Demas. And Paul wrote at the end of his life and at the end of his earthly ministry. He said this. He said, do your best to come to me because Demas has forsaken me. And it's interesting that the person that he wrote that letter to was Timothy. That phrase is found in 2 Timothy, the last chapter of 2 Timothy. And Paul is writing to Timothy, his son in the faith, and he says, you do your best to come to me because Demas has forsaken me because he loved this present world more than the things of God. So what you never see, you see Timothy facing a challenge you see Paul telling him not to be fearful. You see Paul telling him to be strong in the Lord, but you never see Timothy quitting. You never see him giving up. Well, why? Because his heritage was not that of a quitter. You can only impart into others what you are. I can never impart something that I'm not. All right? Uh, I've, I've had people tell me over the years, something that I caught by being around you was this tenacity to keep pushing. Well, you know, that is a spiritual thing and not a natural thing. Because in the natural, I was not that way. I was not taught to be that way. All right? I've said very plainly that you know, before I got a hold of the things of the Word of God, quit was the easiest thing for me to do. Just give up. If it got too hard, just quit. I mean, there's got to be an easier way. Now, I say that, and I, and I don't take any pleasure in saying that, but what I do take pleasure in saying is, number one, I got a hold of the Word of God. Number two, God brought people into my life that could supply me with what I needed, all right? Now, I haven't quit anything in close to 30 years, all right? 28 years now. But here's the point that I'm making. This was not in in Timothy's DNA. Because of his heritage that he had, The heritage wasn't that of a quitter. Paul was his spiritual father, and Paul was a man that didn't know how to quit. 
sometimes to his own uh, detriment. He would just push through things. But the point is, that was his heritage. A minister who doesn't know their spiritual heritage is simply left to try to get things right. All right, the the place that God is taking this fellowship and these churches as a minister in our fellowship, as someone that's ordained in our fellowship, as a leader in our fellowship, you are perfectly positioned for the same thing that's happening in the ministry to begin to happen in your life because it's the natural progression. What, what you see happening in the ministry is what you can expect to start happening in your life. What you see happening in the lives of the leaders, the pastors, your pastor, is what you can begin to expect in your life. Because it's the principle of, uh, I heard a man say it this way one time, as the head goes, so goes the body. All right? This is important because you don't have to try to just figure things out. I was talking to a, uh, a gentleman not too long ago, and he said, uh, talking about his life, how his life had changed since he came to the church, and, and of course, it's the Word and the teaching on the Word, and, and that's vital and that's crucial, but here is one thing that he kept emphasizing. It was also this hooking up and having a heritage. It tells me where I am going. So a minister that doesn't know their heritage is simply left to try to figure things out. And here's why. Number one, there's no delegated authority in their life. No delegated authority. Now, in some areas, this aspect, this, uh, if we could say this, Uh, teaching about authority, I realize it's been overused and I realize it's been misused. But everybody needs a delegated authority in their life. Someone that has a level of authority in their life, not to run their life, but to speak into their life. All right? Because if that's that person is doing something that will hurt them or their ministry, all right, if they don't have that person in their life, they just have to learn the hard way. All right, with without a delegated authority, without somebody to speak into my life, then I just have to learn to do things the hard way. I've made this statement over the years. A lot of times, you know, Uh, a good pastor, a good spiritual father, a good leader uh, that's honest, uh, they're not always telling people what to do, but they may make suggestions. Uh, They may make comments. And I've learned over the years that if my pastor, my uh, spiritual father, the person that I have placed in a position, God has placed in a position as a leader in my life, if they make a comment that pertains to something that I'm facing or that I'm going through, I take that as a, as a direction. I take that as a direction, as that's what I should do. And um, this is important because, uh, again, someone that has a right heart is not always going to pull you to the side and say, now look, boy, the Lord's been talking to me about you, and this is what you need to do. As a matter of fact, generally, people that will do that have a wrong motive. We're going to teach on this later on down the road with this class about pastoring supernaturally. And... I have found over the years, maybe someone will call me and say, uh, this person's in the hospital or we've went to the doctor or something of that nature. And 
I might get just one word. I've, I've had that over the years. I might, I might just get one word. Uh, somebody uh, called not too long ago about an individual in the hospital. And uh, uh, when they told me what was going on, the Lord spoke to me and said, uh, uh, lung function, uh, increased capacity. Well, immediately I know what to pray. All right. But I didn't just call that person and begin to direct them. All right. I called that person and begin to pray with them in line with what the Lord had told me. All right. Or I might call or text and say, uh, you know, the first thing that came up in my spirit was this. I believe that we need to guard against this. Now, the reason I'm saying that is it's not my place to always tell someone what to do, but it is my place as a leader, as a pastor, as their spiritual father to relay to them what is being said to me by the Holy Spirit. And so if someone in a position of leadership, uh, your pastor, your, your father, that person that you're connected to, if they call you and say, look, I was praying about this and this just kept coming up in my spirit. Well, you've got to take that as a directive. All right. You take that as a directive because that's how the Holy Spirit operates. Oh, this is so important. If you have a heritage, that delegated authority, that person in your life can help make you aware of something before it harms you. All right? I remember one time uh, there was a gentleman in the church, and he had his own business. And the business had only been going maybe a year, and, and it was doing uh, fairly well. And uh, one day uh, I was praying for him, and uh, the Lord spoke to me and said, uh, there's coming a storm. There's coming a storm, and it's, it's going to hit that business. But you tell him that within six months it'll pass. Just hold on. All right, and I'm telling him before it comes. I think it was it was going to last six months or it was coming in six months. I think it was it was coming in six months. And to prepare and just hold on, he'll get through it. Well, I did. I told him, and he was grateful. And sure enough, about that time frame later, there was a storm that hit that business. And and uh, there were some things that happened, and, and uh, family members started acting up, and there was even some... Uh, Uh, issues in the business, some accidents and things of that nature, Uh, not where people were harmed, but where product was harmed. And he could go back to that word and know that he was going to get through it if he just stayed with the word. Now, see, that kind of guidance, you can't put a value on it, right? You just can't put a value on it. And when you know that you have someone, uh, a pastor, a spiritual father that's praying for you, that is uh, uh, seeking your welfare, you know, that's the relationship that you want. You don't build relationship based on status. And here's what I mean by that. Uh, Over the years, Uh, Pastor Michelle and I have had the opportunity to be in relationship, uh, and I say opportunity, we we had the opportunity, uh, we didn't take them all uh, because because the Holy Spirit directed us a different way or whatever the case may be, but we were involved with uh, a a church one time, very prominent church some years back, uh, uh, nationally and even internationally known, the leaders were. And uh, uh, we were uh, fairly close to them. Uh, I wouldn't say best friends, but I had a very good relationship with them. And uh, I began to watch people connect to that ministry based on the status of that ministry. 
not based on relationship, not, not based on anything that the Spirit said, but status, all right? It was the happening thing. Their name was known everywhere. Well, the Lord was good and gracious to us to warn us in advance that something just wasn't right, regardless of the status. Now, we are not flighty people, all right? We don't begin relationships and end them six months later. Uh, We don't begin relationships and end them because somebody disagrees with the person we're in relationship with. Uh, We endeavor to make our relationships with people that the Holy Spirit connects us to. And to make a, a, a long story short, it wasn't too long after the Lord began dealing with us that that ministry just imploded. Uh, one of the leaders of that ministry, uh, uh, it was, it was a, a husband and wife team, one of them backslid and went away from the Lord for a number of years. Um, you know, the other, their influence was greatly diminished. And my point in saying that is I watched ministers, ministers that I personally knew that were friends of mine that connected to that ministry just because of the status, not because of a spirit-guided relationship. Now, Pastor Michelle and I, we, we didn't hurt because of that, because we had people in our life that God had hooked us up to. Amen. But I watched other ministers that, it hurt them. It, it hurt them because uh, they were they were propping themselves up uh, with that status. Uh, they were they were using it to uh, get their name out there. Hallelujah. But if you have a heritage, that person in your life is there to see that you succeed, not to use you to make them look successful. This is important because I've watched people over the years that uh, uh, they want people involved with their ministry to add numbers to their ministry. I am uh, ordained with uh, three different groups. Uh, And I'm ordained, of course, with Faith Builders, uh, our organization. Uh, I am ordained with uh, FCF, Faith Christian Fellowship, and I'm ordained with Heritage of Faith, uh, which is Dr. Jerry Savelle's organization. Uh, But here's the thing. When I was ordained with brother Jerry, I had to ask about it. It wasn't something that he promoted because he's not out simply to get ministers into the fellowship. He's out to help ministers be all they can be. It's the same way with us. We've been ordaining ministers for 24 years now. And the purpose of this fellowship is not to show people how many ministers we have or leaders that we have. It is to get ordination. Licensing is connection. When you're ordained with our ministry, there should be a connection. All right? You're connected to the ministry. And so the purpose of that is that you begin to feed off the life that's in this ministry. And yes, you have a spiritual deposit that you make as well, but that is the purpose of ordination. When you're ordained, something is transferred into you and imparted into you from the group that you're ordained with. But then My responsibility then is to maintain the relationship with the group that I'm ordained with. 
And what you'll begin to see, what you'll begin to see, we got about 10 minutes in this session left. What you'll begin to see is that there will be an uptick in your life of certain aspects of that anointing that flow in that ministry. When, uh, when I was connected to my pastor, Pastor Caldwell, when I was connected to him, what I began to see immediately was an ability to see clearer and an ability to organize better and to uh, administrate. Uh, not in a micromanaging type way, but I begin to see a, a marked increase in my ability to see what my church needed and move it in that direction. Now, the reason for that is he had that ability on a higher level than I did. See, if you ever think, well, I've been doing this X amount of years or X amount of time, uh, and you kind of get this idea that, you know, you've seen it all and, and have experienced it all. We have not. None of us have. I, I'm teaching you so that you can learn from me, but I assure you, I'm learning consistently. Why? Because there's always more. If uh, I ministered my first message when I was 16, now, I don't know that that message was really good, and, uh, you know, uh, but anyway, that was, I guess, 39 years ago, so uh, uh, I've been ministering a while. Uh, I've been a full-time pastor for this is my 24th year, but yet there are ministers that have been ministering 55 years. There are pastors that have pastored 40, 45, 50 years, all right? So double what I've pastored. When you get into a relationship with a man or a woman of God, you're connecting to whatever is in them, and then you're feeding off of what's in them. Pastors should feed, I believe, primarily from pastors. That, that, that is so important. And remember, the closer your connection, the stronger the flow, all right, in your life. The closer the connection, the stronger the flow in your life. You know, you, when you have a wireless router in your home, uh, even though technology is such that your wireless devices can connect throughout the whole home, they will still tell you if you've got a device on the other side of the house, you may need a booster to boost that signal. All right? You see, the closer you are, the stronger the flow. So as a minister in our fellowship, a leader in our fellowship, the closer you stay to those you're connected with, the stronger the flow is going to be in your life. Hallelujah. A heritage defines who you are. It describes your makeup. And you then know what a person is made of when you know their heritage. It, it, it describes your makeup. You know what a person is made of when you know their heritage. Hallelujah. I, uh, when we started pastoring the church uh, in Little Rock, uh, many people that came to our church and still come to our church were members of the Great Agape Church. Uh, there that our pastor pastored for 37 years. And uh, those that were there and were faithful and committed, what I found is that they were just quality people. They were people of integrity and people of honor. And I'm not just talking about ministers. I mean just 
members of the church. All right? Uh, li- little old ladies, little old men, young men, young women, uh, black men, black women, Asian, Hispanic, whoever. If they went to that church for any length of time and received and had at one point called my pastor their pastor, there was just a quality about them. All right? Now, conversely, I've seen people come and they'll say, yeah, I went to Agape and you find out they went there maybe six months, right? Maybe, maybe, maybe a year. And there's just a difference. There was just a difference between that person and the one that was there and feeding. See, this is important because what was it? Every time my pastor would minister, he was imparting that quality, that integrity, that steadfastness that was in him into those people. And so consequently, those people come to your church and you really don't have to teach them how to get involved or how to work or how to be faithful, right? Because they, they learned that's their, that's their heritage. Glory to God. Amen. Paul said in 2 Timothy, or excuse me, 2 Corinthians uh, 4.18, that we have the same spirit of faith. That's our heritage. The same spirit of faith that Paul had. It's our heritage to have the same faith. It's inherent within all of us that believe. When you read Hebrews 11, you're seeing your spiritual DNA. And that's the DNA that's in all of us. That's our spiritual makeup. We cannot fail. Our heritage demands that we succeed. A great man of God told me one time, and, I, and I'll mention this in closing this segment. He told me one time, he said, uh, we were connected in relationship. And he said, Philip, you can't fail because you're connected to me. And I took that and ran with it, and I found it to be true. And I tell people, I told a, a young man not too long ago, uh, he said, uh, you know, I'm believing that, you know, we're just going to keep succeeding. I said, brother, you can't fail. You're connected to us. We don't fail. Now, that doesn't mean we can't, and, but I'm telling you, we won't, right? People say, well, everybody can fail. Well, I understand that concept and and I'm not disagreeing with it but what I'm saying is when you're connected to somebody that is consistently seeking the plan of God the direction of God and you stay hooked up and you're following closely you're going to make it and you're going to be okay amen hallelujah well thank you for joining us for this uh, minister's uh, excuse me uh, pastor and essentials class and uh, join us again Next month, we'll be getting emails out to you about when they show up. Join us again next month as we continue exploring our heritage as ministers. God bless you.